Well, now you've got a great recording. You've come from the studio. You've got a great mix. You're all excited. Everybody loves your song. But what do you do with it? You don't just go hang it on YouTube and hope for the best. And you don't just slap it on your website and hope for the best. Getting your songs to all the right people is an art. It's a business, but it's also an art. And the people I know who are the most successful artists and songwriters have the strongest hustle muscles. And I'm going to help you develop yours too. Because without them, you got nothing but a, a lovely master, and it's probably on a CD, which will make a very expensive coaster otherwise. And I don't want to see that happen to you. I want you to be successful. So just listen. If you're a singer-songwriter, you market yourself as a singer-songwriter. You have chosen your genre ahead of time, and your songs fit the genre. So then you go looking for openings in your genre. You go looking for places where your songs will be necessary and where your songs are going to add value to programming that already exists. These days, most new artists break through by having their songs appear in TV shows and in movies. And the people you need to know are the music supervisors for those TV shows and movies. They are hard to reach. They hire legions of people to make sure nobody gets to them. But your job is to get through anyway. You're not going to do much in terms of having a career in the music business by trying to do everything at home from a cell phone. You've got to do what everybody else does, which is back to doing the hustle. You've got to be out there. You've got to make a plan to be performing at least once a week, if not twice. So you're going to go on Tuesday nights and you're, you're going to see Molly Lakin, who's appearing at the What's It Club. And while you're at the What's It Club and performing, you're going to have CDs of your songs available. And you're going to have a business card that says your name, singer-songwriter, with a phone number and an email address. And nothing scratched out from the last three residences you had. Everything current and easy to read. Okay? So you're going to sing your songs. You're going to be out there. And every time you appear, you're going to invite as many people from the quote-unquote industry as you can. It's nice to have the grocer there. It's nice to have the baker there. It's nice to have your chiropractor there. But the people you really want to get to are the ones that can help you inch forward in your career by exposing you via various media. It's not a good idea to spend all kinds of money on a slick and beautiful looking CD presentation. That's the record company's job. Your job is to make the best recording you can and to spend your money on getting out there. If you have to book the gig yourself, if you have to even pay the place so that you can appear there, someday soon they'll be paying you and begging you to come back. Um, your best money is spent networking. You live in East Nowhere. Make sure that you're within whistling distance of Nashville and L.A. and New York and Atlanta and Miami several times a year so you can go to industry functions there. ASCAP and BMI have meetings twice a year. They're, they have them in L.A., Nashville, Atlanta, Miami, New York. If you're not anywhere close to those cities, make it a point to go. I would pick the one in Nashville or Atlanta because it's a lot less money to stay there than it is in New York 
or L.A. And you don't want to be staying way the heck out in the valley and having to drive to Beverly Hills, which could take three weeks on a good day. So you're there, you're hustling. Everybody there actually wants to meet you because they're all looking for new material and new artists. The stuff they have now is working for now, but they're always looking ahead for something new. So your job is to give them the confidence that you are the something new and that you are prolific, that you are uh, productive. You're not a flake. You're not riding on a mountaintop when the mood strikes you, that if they call you and say, we have a scene in this movie, it takes place in a bar, I need a song to be playing in the bar that's a love song, that's hopeful, and when they dance the first dance, the audience knows from the song, because there's no dialogue, but they know from the song that these two are going to have a relationship. So, you have... ASCAP, you have BMI, you have CSEC, which are all performing rights organizations. Their job is to help songwriters network because they only make money when you make money. They, every time your song is in a movie or a TV show or a music video or commercial, you make money. It's their job to collect that money. And don't ask me how they do it because it's too complicated gives me a headache just to think about it. Um, but trust me, the checks do come every quarter, and they're very welcome. So you're on it, you're staying on it, you're staying on it, you're staying on it. Every year there are the Grammys. Every year there's a long list of nominees. Every year the ceremony takes place either in New York or L.A., a ticket to the Grammys can cost more than you earn in a month. But save up. Don't put this on your MasterCard. Save up, and when you have the cash, buy yourself a ticket to the Grammys. and Get the ticket called the Golden Ticket, which invites you to the after party where all the nominees and all the winners and all the managers and the, the managers of the managers and the publishers... They're all in the same room. Walk up to them. Congratulations. My name's Molly Ann Lakin. You don't have to impersonate me, but I don't happen to have another name at this point. I'm Molly Ann Lakin. I'm a hit songwriter. I'm so proud of you. I, I voted for you. And um, I have your next hit single. I'm your next new artist. Uh, here's a CD. I, here's a spot in your tuxedo that isn't full. Here's a, here's a CD. You can stick it in your purse and take it home with you. I promise the 15 minutes that it takes to listen to it are going to be worth it. I'll see you next year at the Grammys. Maybe we'll be working together by then. And congratulations. And you go around the room. You can't be shy. You can't have anybody else do this for you at this point. You're the product, and you're the pitchman for that product. At some point, you, you might have a manager, and the manager will do all the work for you when you're rolling. But until you are, you have to do it yourself. And I want you to practice standing in front of the mirror and, and creating a pitch. So you've got to be a hustler. In addition to being a songwriter and having a great produced set of songs, you've also got to be a hustler. Now, suppose you don't sing your own songs. Hi, I'm a hit songwriter. I have your artist's next hit single. I have your next number one single. I have it on this CD right here. Would you prefer MP3s? At what address can I reach you? What email address can I reach you? What's the best time of day to try to follow up with you? When you, re when you receive the material, how long will it take for you to give it a fair listen? And when is a reasonable time for me to check back in with you? Okay, so you're at the Grammys. You've given away 100 CDs. 
you've exchanged business cards with everybody there. Then you get home, you make a list of everybody, you make a list of all the contacts, contact information, and then you start calling. Now, writing a song and pitching a song use different parts of your persona and your energy. I know a hit songwriter in Nashville who writes on Tuesday and Thursday, and Monday, Wednesday, Friday, he has, he's out there and he hustles, and it works for him. So it's not like you're right in the middle of writing something, and oh my God, I forgot to call so-and-so at Sony. Monday, Wednesday, Friday are your hustle days, Tuesday, Thursday are your writing days. It's a business. This is how it works. Well, you work full-time, doesn't matter. You get home from work, Monday, Wednesday, Friday are your hustle days. Or you call on your break, you call on your lunch break. You follow up, you follow up, you follow up, you follow up. Okay, so you have a full-time job, it pays the bills, it pays for the recordings. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you call after work or you uh, email after work. And Tuesday, Thursday are your writing days. You make a concerted effort to stay on it. They're never going to call you back. I don't think my phone ever rings. I think it's me going after them. I recently wanted to pitch an article to a magazine here. I sent a pitch that I knew was good because I'm good at this. And I sent it to this editor. Never heard back from that editor. Called the editor. Didn't hear back from the editor. Sent an email to the editor. Didn't hear from her. So guess what? I sent it to the publisher. And I followed up with the publisher. Oh, Molly, yeah, that was really good. I'm going to try to find a place for that in, in the next issue. Okay, so when should I follow up? If one person doesn't answer you, go to another person. And stay on it, stay on it, stay on it. And I got, finally got an assignment. And I wrote the article. Then they wanted a photo. Now they're trying to figure out which part of the magazine to put it in. But if I had waited for the first person to contact me, nothing would have happened. It's always on you to hustle, hustle, hustle. And the difference between you and the guy who's on the radio right now is that he made one extra phone call. You can do it. You have great songs, you've got great recordings, and you have learned to hustle like your life depended on it. It does depend on it. Your creative life does depend on it. It seems to go against the grain for a a sensitive, creative person to have to be a big, bold, bossy, hi there. It's Molly again. I'm, I'm still trying to reach John Mayor, I'm still trying to reach Clive Davis. I'm still trying to reach Susie Q. Actually, I wouldn't say that. Hi, it's Molly. How are you today? Boy, that weather must be gorgeous. It's fall. The leaves must be beautiful. I sure envy you. Is Clive in? So you kind of slide it in there. Another thing to do is when you're hustling is to meet people who are not in a business setting. When someone's at lunch, truthfully, he wants to eat. So you're coming up and interrupting his lunch is not a good idea. And I say he, but hey, we're there too. The women have many more opportunities now than they did when I was coming up. And truthfully, they're running the business. So it could be she's having lunch. So you figure, I mean, if if you're really into this, You find out where they go to church and you suddenly go to that service. You find out where they take their kids for daycare. And what do you know? You suddenly have a kid who goes to the same daycare. Do they play golf? Well, I know it's pricey, but there are always these golf celebrity tournaments and tennis tournaments. And you want to show up there and you want to be in their foursome. And eventually... You'll be, hey, that's Molly, sure, yeah, send me, send me a CD t- sometime. I'd love to hear your new work. Suddenly, it's comfortable for them to know, do business with you. You're not a stranger. You're not some yetz for the Internet who could be a, 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 a nutcase. 
So your whole life is about who can you meet, when can you meet them, fill your car with your CDs, um, find out what all the new projects are, Look, read um, Variety magazine lists all the movies that are being made. It's going to list the music supervisors for each film. Make an introduction to that music supervisor. Try to get a copy of the script and find out where they need songs for which scenes. Stay on it. You may not make this feature. You may not make the next feature. But suddenly there's this little independent movie in Missouri and they don't have a music budget and they do have a music supervisor who obviously is not going to get the songs from the A-list people because they want the big bucks. But you could slide into that. Suddenly this little movie gets picked up by a big movie studio. Suddenly there's a big soundtrack album. The little $250 license fee you got is suddenly bumped up to $50,000. Suddenly your song is nominated for an Oscar. All kinds of things can happen, but you got to stay on it. It's not happenstance. Nobody's going to find your CD at the bottom of a big stack. Stay on it, stay on it, stay on it. Have great material. Use your hustle muscles. Make good recordings, and you're going to have a career, and I'll be in the front row cheering you on. Hey, there's something really important I forgot to tell you earlier. When you finish a song, before you go into the recording studio, you should have somebody look at it and listen to it and help you decide if it's as strong as it needs to be in order to realistically compete in a very, very competitive marketplace. And I am that person for thousands of developing artists all over the world. So that's something we can talk about later. But don't just finish something and rush to the studio because between the time the ink is drying and you get to the studio, there's always something that you want to change that can make a huge difference between having a good song and a great song. And even on the way to the studio, as I'm driving to L.A. and listening to the track over and over, I've changed words right there, right there on the 101. I think it's usually at C-word exit. I have some learning tools that are fantastic and that I'm happy to offer you. The first is my book called How to Be a Hit Songwriter. It covers everything we've discussed this morning, as well as lots of other things, the secrets of hit songwriting. And then I have another book, How to Write a Hit Song, which is in its fifth edition and is also fantastic. And to go with them, I produce Molly Ann Lakin's Master Class in Songwriting, which is a compilation of all the very best classes that I taught at UCLA. And with the books, this comprises a complete home study hit songwriting course. Thank you again, write well, see on the charts, and be sure to let me know if I can help you with your songs in terms of a consultation for marketing and evaluation. You can reach me at my website, songmd at songmd.com, but please don't send me any unsolicited material because it'll be automatically deleted. Those of you in North America, that's Canada, U.S., and Mexico, you can call my 800 number, 800-851-6588, and try to reach me between 8.30 a.m., and 6.30 p.m. Pacific time, okay? You know you're good. You know you've got something special. You have a gift that you want to share with the world. I'm with you. I'm here for you. When you're ready to move forward and make your dreams come true, here I am.